What's up, everybody? It's your boy True Element 78 in the building with your one and only reigning defending Mondo Lucha Hall of Famer, the X Man, Xavier Mustafa. And everybody's favorite narcissist and CM Punk's favorite um, client to cut hair, <laughs> the natural Chris Black. I guess that made sense if yeah, you speak his alien. Favorite, his favorite client. <laughs> you know that? Was he the one who actually shaved your head or was it Gallo? No, it was him. Oh, okay. He fucked me up on purpose, I think. You'll think it was a rib. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, today is September 1st, 2021. We were we are recording this directly following Dynamite. And this is a special edition where we discuss or give you guys our AEW All Out 2021 predictions. And before we get into any of that, I must say, obviously, we're recording this before Dynamite. And Dynamite, I guess, is going to be the official. I mean, not Dynamite. Um, Rampage is going to be the official go home show. But I'm not counting that. I'm counting Dynamite as the go home show. And AEW, once again, does not know how to do a go home show, in my opinion. They fell back on all of the things that I was getting tired of in AEW a year ago (laughs) and over a year ago. All these rundowns, all these beatdowns. At least they didn't do the one trope that they always pull out whenever they have a battle royal coming up. And what they they're guilty of, and WWE is also guilty of creating a scenario where everybody in the battle royal hits the ring at once. <laughs> Wait a minute, I love that trope. <laughs> I don't get everybody excited, man. The the only way I like that is when. Everyone maybe storms the rain, they start fighting, and then they're just like, oh, we're out of time, folks. And people are still fighting as it goes off air. I don't like it. One man stands tall. It's like, eh. <laughs> and that's that's the other thing they did that I, I liked, but I didn't like on this episode. They ran out of time during the beatdown of the elite on Christian Cage. And the announcers, because they ran out of time, were only able to promote all the upcoming shows and stuff things instead of being like hey uh, we're, we're all out of time go on our youtube page to find out what happens after the camera's cut or whatever or we'll bring you what happens on rampage or or something like that because you know you gotta get that you gotta you gotta sell 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 at the end but i don't know they should did the old wcw and be like we're keeping the cameras rolling ladies and gentlemen if you miss something we'll have it right back here next week yeah and except, that's basically what i said except we got the internet now so yeah. <laughs> but with that being said, we are here to give you guys the AEW All Out predictions. As I said before, it is happening on Sunday, September 5th, broadcasting live from the Now Arena in the Hoffman Estates of Illin- um, Hoffman Estates in Illinois, which is right outside of Chicago. The show starts at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. But one hour before both of those times, you have the buy in pre show, which starts at 7 p.m. And as of right now, there are two matches scheduled to be on that show. One was added tonight. Chris Black, what is that match? Because AEW was terrible at updating their um, website and have nothing listed under details for the (laughs) pay-per-view. Well, I've got one match for the pre-show, which is the 10-man tag team match with Orange Cassidy, Chuck Taylor, Wheeler Yuta, and Jurassic Express taking on Matt Hardy, uh, private party and th2 you know those jobbers on how they call it jack evans any predictions for that match i like a lot think, of people oh, go ahead. Go ahead. matt hardy them needs a win yeah they've been getting jobbed out left and right i i but then again well you know what yes go I, i'm gonna go with that as well um Orange Cassidy cannot take the pin. No. Um, <laughs> Chuck Taylor or Wheeler Yuta will take the pin. Yeah, then, I, I, yeah, I think Matt Hardy's group needs to win something. They had a major presence on Wednesday, Wednesday night show as well. So, I, th- yeah, I do think that they get a, get a W here. Otherwise, there's no point in having the Hardy front office around anymore, family office, whatever HFO wants to stand for. So, The other match that you said you don't know about that's on the buy-in is the Women's Battle Royal. 
I didn't know that's on the buy. It's not marked as the buy-in. But yeah, it's I'm marked sure. as the buy-in. At least what I'm looking at is marked for the buy-in. Okay. So it's a 21-woman casino battle royale for a future title shot. And, yeah, so it's on the buy-in. We have a good list of the competitors that have been announced. If if you don't know the rules, there's a quick synopsis of it. I may get some of it wrong, but they have each group of competitors comes out in a suit of cards. So you got your spades, you got your clubs, you got your hearts, you got your diamonds, and they all come out as a group. And then you got your aces, and then the last person to come out is usually the joker, which this year is predicted that that is going to be um, Ruby Riot, now known as Ruby Soho. So that'll be interesting to see if that is what happens. But as so- of, go ahead, Soho. <laughs> Out a good name. Yeah. So as of right now, some of the competitors that are in the match are Thunder Rosa, Tay Conti, Julia Hart, Big Swole, The Bunny, Red Velvet, Penelope Ford, Diamante, Nyla Rose, Jay Cargill. Um. Who else do we have? Kira Hogan. Uh, yeah, Kira Hogan. And, uh, oh, um, dang, Anna J has been also added to the match. She made her return tonight as well. So, As far as this match goes, you would think it would be Jay Cargill, but I think that she's still too green, and I think that her and Nyla Rose are going to cancel one another out. Nah, Jay I, I Cargill think- all the way. <laughs> I think it's too early to have the rematch with Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker. Okay, so all right, so right away I'm thinking I'm looking at the field of women that are involved, and I'm trying to think who's gonna make a good um, opponent for Britt Baker. <laughs> Spoiler: <laughs> um, for some odd reason, I think that they're gonna allow Ruby Soho to win this. Don't know why. I just think it'd be kind of shocking, and I don't know. I think that those two might have good chemistry. Okay, years pass. Has the Joker ever won? Because wasn't the last no. one what Leo Rush? Leo was Rush won. was. Um, and and then which part was the who did the botch? Mike Sado. I mean, Matt Sado. Yeah, wasn't he the Joker one year? No. And no, he wasn't the last person that I that I recall. I don't remember recall him being the, the last first one. Joker in the very first show. I remember Mercedes Martinez being the Joker. I believe I was on the first. Um, it, I think that was all in. I don't think that was all out. So, I don't, but, like, I'm, but no joke. I, I know for a fact no Jokers have ever won. Which is one reason why I think Ruby's going to win because I'm again I'm looking at it and I'm just like. Red Velvet, nah. They already had a match. At Carl Sheeta, it'd be a rematch. I think uh, Tay Conti could win it. Eh, I don't know if they're ready for that yet. Or is ready for her to step up. She could though. Whoever wins ain't gonna win against Britt Baker. Yeah, they're not. They're not gonna win. They're not gonna win the belt, and it's not gonna be a match that they could sell for the next pay per view. It's gonna be a match they could have on a dynamite in like two or three weeks following this pay per view. So. Listen, That's why I say Tay Conti is at least giving her a look at the title. See, I'm 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 gonna double down on Jay Cargill, and I know a lot of people would think, "Oh, let's look for a babyface because it's Britt Baker." But we know AEW has no problem making heel versus heel, and Jay Cargill will end up being a babyface. I don't think the two characters will, will mesh. Do you guys see how hard AEW was working to get some type of booze for Britt Baker tonight? That she had information on a free agent signing, and earlier in the day she had posted about how Adam Cole had zero cavities and posted a picture of him in her dental chair. So they're talking about she hasn't announced about a free agent. And she's like, oh yeah, the free agent is me. I signed a new contract. I'm going to be here for a very long time. And you heard a couple of jeers to it, but she still got cheered in the end. They still chanted DMD with her. <laughs> Which they need to, uh, again, I hate this. I'm a heel, but the fans love me. I don't like that shit. Be a fucking heel. Did you hate it when The Rock did it? 
Okay, so I need time to pull that bullshit. Okay, we're talking a different era. Stone Cold could pull it off. The Rock could pull it off. I honestly, I, well, no, it's kind of the opposite with John Cena. John Cena was a baby face, but everyone booed him. The only person that got booze working with John Cena was Edge because he's an amazing fucking heel. Um, I don't know. The Rock is just, I don't know. The Rock is Stone Cold. Maybe because their characters are just like, they're not, you know, your white meat baby face. But they're not like a dastardly heel. They're just who they are. They're like anti-heroes. I think those two are probably the only two that probably pulled that off. Sounds like cope to me. But um, <laughs> anyways, I, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go with Tay Conti. I think Tay Conti wins it here. She's been working hard. There's nobody else I can see in that division right now coming out of it uh, besides Thunder Rosa. But like I said, I think that's one that you gave us the lights out match between Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker. So the next time they face each other needs to be on a pay-per-view for the title. I don't think they need to be doing anything else until then. So you either do that at Revolution, which I believe is the next pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah, I believe that's the next pay-per-view. I don't think Full Gear is the next pay-per-view. Yeah. It's got to be revolution. So, yeah, that's where I think that you do that. So, so for the record, I'm saying Jay Cargill. You saying Ty Conte. Who you got, Chris White? Ruby Soho. So we're all over the board on this one, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all right. It's a battle royal. That, that, that means they're doing something right. It shouldn't be predictable. Y'all want to throw some bets down? Let's go. Oh, what was it? What was that we were talking about earlier? The oh, loser, yeah. the loser has to wear the onesie. Uh, yes, the loser <laughs> has to wear the that. polo onesie. <laughs> if, if if none of our picks win, we all got to wear the onesie. <laughs> oh wait, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't. To the next, to the next Legacy Pro Show. Listeners, come up with an idea for us. Put it in the comment section. <laughs> Something. Chris Black, Chris Black has to grow the fro back. Oh, oh, hold up. Chris Black, if, if Eddie loses and Chris Black lose, neither one of their predict. If my prediction comes true and both of your predictions are wrong, Eddie has to shave his beard and Chris Black has to wear it. <laughs> As a fro. That's unsanitary. <laughs> Wash your hair. Can you put somebody else's hair on your face? I said on his head. <laughs> he he got to bring the fro back. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I could deal with the fro anymore. <laughs> that, 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 like you said, hey, you listening to this, throw something down in the comments. Maybe we'll do something or we'll save it for another show. I don't think it's fair to do it for Battle Royal, but like I said, I, I like that we're all somewhere different with it. Right. I, I, I do think that it, to have a Joker come in and win would be kind of a slap in the face to the women that's been there. For them to go straight to a title shot, I think that's one way to get heat on yourself. <laughs> like if CM Punk just walked in and started demanding a title shot instead of <laughs> working his way up, or Christian Christian Cage putting people yeah. over. Yeah, but the way AEW works, it's just like if she has a match with Britt Baker, shows the crowd what she's capable of, and loses, she'll be you know she's gonna have to start again at the bottom and build her way up to get another title shot. So, I mean, there's a story there. Like, their first encounter, she failed. Now she's got to work her way back up to the top. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It just hasn't happened at AEW, and I think that that's kind of endearing to the brand because there's so many people they've brought in who they could have just put right into a title picture, and they haven't done it. They've, showed res- they've shown restraint in that regard. So, Can one of you guys that, like, cover the other promotions, can you tell me where Serena Deeb is? She is injured. Ah, okay. I miss her. Yeah, yeah. I believe it was her other leg, or it might have been the same leg, if I'm not mistaken. I, I miss her too. I would love to see, I would love to see a segment with her and CM Punk in the back. Somebody Wait. said that the the reunion that everyone wants to see is Gallows, Punk, and Serena. And I heard someone say Chris Black, but I wasn't sure. I don't remember Chris Black ever being around <laughs> those characters. Oh, the only, the only black, the only black I remember being around him was a guy named Trevor. 
from yeah, Green Bay, somebody, Wisconsin. Somebody said they need to reunite. <laughs> AW, you can find my contact information in the description. But I heard Trevor is a pothead these days. So I don't know if CM Punk really rocks with that. <laughs> hey, there's a story there. There's a story there. <laughs> oh, you you fallen? You're not straight edge anymore, Trevor. <laughs> Trevor, how about we go bungee jumping? You're like, but you left me. You left me hanging. That is a deep cut for anybody who knows what I'm talking about when I say Trevor going bungee jumping. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> man. man. You're you showing, showing your age. But um, next up, we got John Moxley versus Satoshi Kojima, and I will let Chris Black go first. Obviously, John Moxley's winning. I'm going to go with Moxley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kojima's going to get his... He's going to get those uh, ridiculous machine gun shops. I don't like them, but he does them every single match. I'm going with Kenta being that as the third person in this match, and he goes over. <laughs> we have to go to sleep. Kenta? <laughs> but <laughs> if that doesn't happen, it'll be John Moxley. <laughs> Old prediction. We did have a match that was removed from the card, and it was replaced with the buy-in match that Chris Black mentioned earlier which was the um, 10-man tag match. So the match that was removed was the Pac versus Andrade El Idolo match, and that has been removed due to travel problems. Don't know whose part. I'm imagining it's Pac because Andrade has been back from Mexico for a while. So, you know, I know we talked about this offline, but... Now that I think about it, like there, Pac was notorious in that one match with um, uh, the Cowboy, where they couldn't quite come up with a finish, a proper finish. So I don't know. Maybe Pac and Andrade they have little creative differences about who should lose that match, and they're just calling it travel restrictions. Yeah. So. Nothing else to really say there about that. So <laughs> then you got Paul White taking on QT Marshall. You saw Paul White get physical tonight with the gun club turning her back on the former Big Show. Going at his leg, took a chair shot to the head. QT Marshall has been given nothing in any of his feuds. Did you just say the gun club? Yep. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait a minute, the gun club turned heel? Is oh, some people up? didn't watch Dynamite. No, no I'm, I just, I'm saying that because I don't like the name. Too close to Bullet Club. I think they do call themselves that, though. But <laughs> yeah, so interesting. That, Paul, like I said, Q, nobody gives a fuck about QT Marshall or his, or his crew. And as much as I hate to say it, and it sounds like disrespect, nobody really gives a fuck about Paul White either. <laughs> So, no, so, so this is definitely piss break match. This should be on the buy-in. Um, I think QT Marshall needs to win because he has these young guys with him and they've been given nothing in any of the feuds they've been in. Like, I still can't even name the guys that's with him. I know, like, Camacho or whatever the name, the hairy guy. Camarato. Yeah, Camarato. Like, Aaron Solo. Okay. I think you know that name because you guys worked him. I believe he's been in was he, he's been in Wisconsin before, right? If I'm not mistaken. I just remember the names because of uh, Jim Cornette always saying "Solo Camarato." <laughs> <laughs> A mnemonic device. All right, yeah. So I say Q2 Marshall goes over. Listen, I'm gonna have to I agree with that because I put Big Show over. I'm sorry, Paul White. Sorry, he's no longer the big show. No more BS. Uh, yeah, true element. I don't understand this disrespect towards the giant, the son of Andre. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going with the big show. Putting over the big man. Because, again. The only don't... one you'll ever see him put over. Again, because they don't give two shits about QT Marshall. Marshall. Then next up, we got Chris Jericho taking on MJF. If Chris Jericho loses, he can never wrestle in an AEW ring again. He has to sit his ass at that commentary table like a good little boy. Let me go first on this one. I think Jericho's going to lose. 
I think this is his swan song, if you will. The Last Dance of Chris Jericho. I'm so torn with this match. I can so see Jericho fading off into the back. Well, fading off into the commentary desk. But, I mean, I still think he got some go in him. But at the same time, MJF, that'd be one hell of a a boost if he takes Jericho out, like, his career. I, this is tough. I'm going to have to go with, god damn it, I'm going to have to go with MJF. Reluctantly. I think MJF should win it. And it's that Jericho can never wrestle in an AEW ring again. So we can still see Jericho in New Japan. Or Jericho gets sent over to Impact. Or anywhere else. He just can't wrestle in an AEW ring anymore. Okay, let's okay. Let's just try to let's talk this out for a second. Just <laughs> it's not like a hostage situation. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's talk about with, this before we get too crazy. If Chris Jericho wins and he doesn't retire, what's left for him? That's why I think he's done. I don't think there's really anything else that he needs to do. Okay. He would have already had a great career. He will be putting over the next generation. I don't. I don't think he needs to do anything. Yeah, he would have literally have done everything there is doing wrestling, including giving the middle finger to the WWE. Right. If anything, he, oh sorry. Oh, so I was just gonna say he would have won every belt there is to win in almost in, in every major promotion, damn near, besides the WCW World Heavyweight Championship, which he still won in the WWE. When he was there, he won the big gold. He was the first undisputed champion. He would have been the first ever AEW world champion. He carried and built, he pretty much carried and built the promotion on his back for a year. Yeah. A year, actually, you can even argue two years because even though like Kenny Omega is the champion, even while, since he's been champion, what's been the biggest storyline on AEW? It was the pinnacle versus, um, the pinnacle versus the inner circle. So yeah. Jericho would have done more. Like, if somebody told you, came up to you, me and told me that Chris Jericho was their, the greatest of all time, it'd be kind of hard to argue against them when you look at the accomplishments that he's made. Is he as big of a name as Stone Cold, Hulk Hogan, The Rock? No, not, not to a lot of people. He still has that name recognition. But for the actual wrestling fan, there wouldn't have been anything that Chris Jericho has not done down there. Besides winning, like I said, um, well, actually, I guess the only thing left for him to do would be to win the New Japan World title. Right. And he's held which, the Intercontinental title. <laughs> yeah, which, like I said, it says that he can never wrestle in an AEW ring again. So it frees him up to be in the commentary booth or go over to Japan and compete there and actually enter the G1 Classic or something like that. Like. Okay. Uh, I don't know about all that. I don't know if Chris Jericho. I, I said I, I feel he can still go. Can he go in New Japan? I don't know about that. Uh, I think he would push himself. We we saw him in there with Nick Gage. We'll all agree that Nick Gage is not the greatest wrestler in the world. But who would expect for someone of Jericho's prestige to go in there and take what he took from Nick Gage at this point in his career? He had no reason to do any of that. Right. So. I think he's just crazy enough to just go do it. And like I said, he had nothing but free time to get as healthy as possible for something like that. Even the night you saw him, he looked like he's in great shape right now. Like he's getting in shape. Like I know Fozzie's on back on the road and on tour. So who knows? But I think MJF goes over here. I think he should go over. It won't necessarily hurt MJF if he does lose to Jericho here. But if he goes over on Jericho, to the fucking moon. Yeah. Absolutely. And the amount of heat. Nuclear. With the promos he could cut after getting rid of Jericho. And it would also make him the number one contender. More than likely for the AEW world title. Got to put it on a baby face first. Do you <sighs> MGF and Kenny Omega? Sorry, that's a match nobody wants to see. 
Yeah, I I I think nobody wants to see it more for the style clash. But, you know, that's just me. It really wouldn't be that much different from how we got started with MJF and Jericho, though. They were both heels when this first started. I guess. And you would have the pinnacle watching MJF's back, and you would have the elite being goofballs on the other side. See, the elite are heels, but they do, they're chicken shit heels, whereas the pinnacle are heels who aren't afraid to fucking fight. Which, uh, oh yeah, one more thing. I know they don't have a match on the show, but shout out to FTR and Proud and Powerful. That tag team match they kicked off Dynamite with was really damn good. Yeah, I'm surprised they gave that away on free TV. Yeah, that that was a freaking good tag team match. So, I think we all said MJF, so we can move on. Next up, we got CM Punk versus Darby Allen. CM Punk's first match back in the ring in seven years. He delivered a GTS tonight. What'd you guys think? Still got it. CM Punk for the win. CM Punk. So, okay. So before I say CM Punk, I actually did think about this today. I was like, would it would it make sense for Darby Allen to win? Because Punk's been it would make sense he has not wrestled in seven years. He's said publicly he hasn't really done anything wrestling related to prepare for this match. Now he said like he's gonna I think what last week he said he's gonna start um you know working out in the wrestling ring, but he hasn't done anything specific to prepare for this match. He's just been doing his normal MMA training. And we all know that there's a big difference between, you know, just being in ring shape for a big match. So storyline wise, it would make sense if Darby Allen won somehow just pulled the victory out, but we all know CM Punk's winning this match. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying, I wouldn't be disappointed if Darby Allen got the victory. But we all can dream. And this is happening live while we're on the air. I uh, we, we talked about this offline before we went online. And this was posted about an hour ago, I guess, from when we're recording this. Um, there was a post that went up by, I forgot, it was another wrestler. He had posted something about Daphne. It went online on her um Instagram and was talking like suicidal thoughts. People were saying she had a gun and everything and he was saying asking does anyone have any information on where she lives? And so they were trying to figure that all out and what was going on. And Sean Ross Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com is saying that emergency services have been contacted and sent to her most recent known addresses and her family has been reached um and have her current address and she had moved in the past couple of weeks and police are in route and so that was about 30 minutes ago that final post so if any other details come out while we're on the air we'll let you guys know what is going on there but praying for all involved and that it's a happy ending AEW tag team champions the young bucks taking on Jurassic oh sorry AEW tag team champions the young bucks taking on Lucha Brothers in a steel cage title match Okay. Most insane match. This is going to be match of the year. Match of the year. Uh, contender. Anyway. um, <laughs> uh, Again, I'm torn with this match. Maybe I'm just overthinking this whole show. But I don't feel like the Young Bucks can lose their titles at this time. But the Lucha Brothers have not been the AEW Tag Team Champions yet. I mean, how long are you going to deny them? And I even got my, my sheet in front of me. I did not mark a winner with this match. I'm... Fuck it. I'm going with the Lucha Brothers. We all win. We all win when it comes to this match. 
I'm letting Xavier Mustafa go. I I feel the other way about it. I'm I'm not looking forward to this match. I think it's just going to be, and no offense to the talent involved, but I think it's just going to be a super duper spot fest. Absolutely. (laughs) Would you expect anything less from these four? That's true. But I guess I guess if I want to super suspend this uh, disbelief <laughs> in all logic, <laughs> then the match will be fine. Um, well, well, we know we they ain't, they ain't losing the title, so I'm going with the young bucks. <laughs> as much as I would love to see the Lucha Brothers win it, I do think the young bucks find a way to retain. So that's what I'm calling for this match. Next up, we got the AEW Women's Champion, Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander in the title match. Britt Baker. Britt Baker. DMD. Next up, we got the AEW World Champion, Kenny Omega versus Christian Cage for the AEW title. Kenny Omega. Yep, I second that. Kenny O. Omega. All right, and that has been your AEW prediction. This one. What did I miss? Miro versus Eddie Kingston. Oh, yes. I did miss Miro versus Eddie Kingston. No disrespect to either one of them. I'm actually looking forward to that match, but Miro goes over and Eddie gets wrecked. Yes. Miro and, that's, and that sucks for Eddie because all he's done is lose. Yeah, I agree but with you, that. But I don't think Eddie Kingston minds putting over. I don't, think he, I don't think he minds. I think Eddie Kingston is grateful to be there. He never thought that he would be on a national television show. He he said that in like his first promo. He never thought he would make it to the big time where he was on television every week and able to have a st- steady and stable job. So I know he doesn't mind putting people over. He doesn't need to be world champion or any of that for him to be happy because he never thought his career would go as far as it has. Right. But like you guys have said on here, you have to protect your character. And his character is what it is, and he's a good talker and everything like that. He's kind of like he's kind of like Samoa Joe, but you know what Samoa Joe did occasionally? He would win. <laughs> as much as Samoa Joe would lose, <laughs> he could win he could win one and make you believe again. Eddie Kingston's wins have all come in tag team matches with Moxley. I can't remember the last time I watched Eddie Kingston get a one-on-one victory. And maybe he does on Dark or Elevation. I don't really watch those shows. But as far as being a legitimate competitor and seeing him win on the television show, I can't recall it. So you're a good talker. You can talk me into believing that you're going to win. Only if I see you sometimes back it up. That was the same thing with The Rock back in the day. The Rock would talk all this shit, get to the big show and lose. But he would talk shit to everybody, and he would win the 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 matches that didn't really matter on the regular show. So whenever he would talk, she'd be like, oh, yeah, he he, he beat dude ass last, last week, so maybe he can win this match. <laughs> so that's all I'll say about Eddie Kingston. I'm an Eddie Kingston fan. The fans love Eddie Kingston. But, um, yeah, he's out there to be fed to the Redeemer. I'm just going to make one last comment, and then we can shut it down. The only reason why I'm basically picking the Lucha Brothers is because as I'm looking at this card, if the Young Bucks win, every single champion retains. I think there's going to be one title switch. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but I just I just feel like there should be. I think the Lucha Brothers are going to win. Uh, it's gonna be a hell heavy show, no matter what. True that. Very hill heavy show. We we picked QT, we picked MJF, like CM Punk and Darby. That's whatever. Um, we have said the Young Bucks. Now you're saying Lucha. We said Britt Baker. We said Kenny O. So yeah, be a very hill heavy show. Got to send the people home happy. So maybe we we have Hangman come out after the Christian Cage loses or something. Like Kenny Omega can't help himself with Christian Cage or something after the match. 
But I don't know. Do you start a hangman program this this early? Do you w- try to hold off until full gear or whatever the next? Actually, I think the pay- next pay-per-view is full gear. I think Revol- Revolution is in February. So, yeah. Do you, do you hold off until full gear? Or do you do the do it on free television with uh, Hangman Adam Page? Because he has to get his he has to get his due. <sighs> Does Christian Cage get beat down, and that's when we get the debut of Daniel Bryan? <clears throat> you got to send the people home happy, but also it's... think. The, but also don't think the main event is going to be Kenny Omega. I do think it's going to be CM Punk or Darby Allen. Is it just me? I'm not as excited for Adam Page winning as I was before. He's been cooled off now to the point. Uh, we talked about this on the podcast where when the crowds came back, it seemed like he had been cooled off too much. When the crowds came back, he was hot. And then I mentioned that nobody like, nobody really made a big deal about him losing that tag team match where he lost his title shot. Nobody really made I, I didn't see the internet really in an uproar or anything like that about him losing. And then he decides to take himself off television for the birth of his new child. Now he's cooled off to the point where I think it's going to take some work to build him back up. So, yeah, I, I would agree with that. How you guys think this car looks overall? Is it, a, in my opinion, it's a show built around CM Punk and Darby Allen and, and and the Jericho match. I say those are the two matches that this entire show is hinged on. You know what? I will I will have to agree with that because. Kenny Omega and Christian Cage, in essence, to rematch, and we both and we all know Kenny Omega's not losing twice. Um, Britt Baker and Chris Statlander. I, I know you're kind of a fan of Statlander. I'm just, just not. Miro versus Eddie Kingston doesn't really feel special. It's if anything is to put Miro over. Um, they have their, um, they have their um, God damn it. Young Bucks and Lucha Brothers, you know, they're going to have their spot fest match. Moxley and Kojima, that's not special. Paul White, QT Marshall, that's not special. So, yeah, it's basically built on Jericho, MJF, and Punk and Derby. And even the Jericho and MJF stuff wouldn't even feel special if it wasn't his career being on the line. Right. Right. Mustafa, thoughts? Uh, I uh, I'm gonna disagree with you. I don't think this whole show is hinged on those two two matches, even though they are going to be well, they uh, what's what I'm for? They are put in a higher position than all the other matches. But I think all I think some of the other matches are going to be pretty solid as well. So I think overall it's going to be a solid pay per view. And keeping in mind that this pay per view is fifty dollars. Oh. Question for you guys. Not for Chris Black. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, does CM Punk and Darby Allen go on last? Well, I said that. I said that Kenny and Christian Cage is in the main. You gotta send the people home happy. No matter who wins the CM Punk Darby Allen match, I think fans go home happy. That match can't go on last. Cause that match is for nothing. And it's in Chicago. It's it, it it's not, it's it's for nothing, but it's CM Punk's return. I don't, and, and this is their WrestleMania, basically. You can't really throw just throw him just in the middle somewhere. I feel like he has to go on last. Well, uh, I say he has to go on last because, like I said, you got to send the fans home happy. And we already said this is a heel heavy show. You can't close it with Jericho losing his career. And like I said, this is basically their WrestleMania. So CM Punk never got the main event WrestleMania, but you can say he main evented all out at, in Chicago. It's almost like it's almost like Money in the Bank all over again. Okay, at the risk of extending this show a little longer, how do you guys feel? How are they going to debut Daniel Bryan? They're saying it's going to be. It was supposed to be in New York at the Arthur Ashe Arena. Or uh, stadium 
and now they're saying it might be here at All Out. So I really don't know. I think we're going to get a heel. You think he's going to be a heel? Yes. Mm, I don't think he's going to be a baby face. They need a big heel. They got too many big baby faces. Well, that's why MJF has to beat Jericho. I would like, speaking of MJF, I would like it might be too soon for a program between them two, so maybe they just have an interaction. I'd actually would like to see Daniel Bryan come down and confront MJF after he retires Jericho. And crickets. <laughs> I was I was trying to give Xavier Mustafa the floor. I didn't oh. want to cut him off. No, no. That's what happened. That, that's what happened when I let the air breathe. That's why I'll, he always get cut <laughs> off. <laughs> um. Yeah, no comment. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know. Um. I. I don't know how I will feel about that one. I actually got. I actually will feel more like. CM Punk beats Darby, and then you get the debut of Ryan. To do what? To face Punk. And the only reason I say that, because it's two different types of matches. So you guys wrestle are wrestlers, and you guys already know that when you get old or you haven't been in the ring in a long time, what's the first type of match they typically will put you in? They're not going to put you in something technical. They're going to put you in more like a brawl, street fight type of match, right? Right. That's what he. That's what CM Punk is getting with Darby Allen to kind of work off some of those cobwebs with Darby. And then you want to put him in there with somebody technical to maybe work a program to kind of get those legs back up under him again as well. So I would bring in Daniel Bryan to debut to go against Punk possibly to for those two to work together. Plus they do have the history from the WWE, so I think you could even work that into the storyline without, you know, copyright infringement or any of that type of stuff where it's like, I got fired or whatever, and because you didn't stick up for me when I choked that guy with that tie that one time and <laughs> I I kinda I, I keep thinking about the whole Daniel Bryan coming in as a heel. I don't know if the fans will allow that. <laughs> I don't think they're going to boo this man at all. Well, that's also why you put him in there with Punk as well. Yeah, I can. Uh. Because the only other thing I can see for Punk go after Darby is MJF. I, I think, think it's soon for that. I think MJF come, basically becomes like the WWE killer. Like, I'm about to get rid of all these fucking WWE guys who couldn't make it. That's trying to take the spotlight away from the young guys here in AEW. I and like that becomes that. his gimmick. Basically the legend killer gimmick. <laughs> Call him the New York killer. Yeah. So I think I think that at least that's the direction I would take with MJF. Like he has his own little NWO faction. Obviously, he does have FTR in there, which work are from WWE, but you know, you can kind of work around that because they were only there for like a fucking like quick blip or whatever. Because they weren't built for the WWE system. So you just have MJF going, taking out all these legends. You have them take out Chris Jericho. You have them take out CM Punk. Or like I said, maybe Jericho loses to MJF and then you debut Daniel Bryan. So now it's MJF versus Daniel Bryan. But those are the only two directions I would go with Bryan. It's either going to be Bryan versus uh, MJF or Bryan versus Punk. And that way you keep MJF away from the AEW world title picture for a little bit longer. Because MJF has nothing else to do after he beats Jericho. If if he beats Jericho, which we all say he probably will. I don't know where you go with MJF from that point. Besides, like I said, going against Kenny Omega. Like he, he would be in the title picture. So I guess, so I guess Heyman and Adam Page would have to fight MJF. Because MJF hasn't lost. He's still undefeated. True that. I get about to say with the, with the whole X WWE thing, I can see his next program being against Christian Cage. Ah, uh, but he's got the impact. Eh, never mind. Yeah, so that's where I would go with it. Xavier Mustafa, you got anything? Nope. Do you agree with anything that I said? Do you oh, like any of it? I absolutely disagree with everything you said because you said it. <laughs> no, no, you make some good points. But, I mean, we'll see. I, I have no idea where they're going to go with all of this. 
Well, how would you debut Daniel Bryan? Uh, definitely as a heel. And I want him to work with people like Jungle Boy. Um, I don't know, mainly Jungle Boy. I want to see Jungle Boy, uh, I don't want to say get over, because I think he's already over. Get more over. Uh, I would like to see him work with Darby Allen. Definitely want to see him and see him punk work. So that's probably what I would do. I'll probably have him do some of those feuds. You know, do some new feuds, that would be good. Do some old feuds, that would be good. And that's what I would do. And ladies and gentlemen, he did not say how he would debut. Dang right. But with said, that being said, I said you got, you got one more shot here to like look over the Showcase of Champions show, which is happening me. this I'm weekend. Just I'm just going to keep so, talking. All right, what? I'm done. Go ahead. I'm done. You sure? I'm positive. You're definitely going to be done after the Dark Match Mafia gets their hands on you this Saturday. So go ahead. Go ahead and read off your obituary of the matches that are going to happen before your career is ended, before I get the opportunity. Let the people know what's up. First of all, he's referencing the match with the Urban Horseman and Devin August versus the Dark Match Mafia that's happening. Uh, when is this going up? Tomorrow? So, tomorrow. Um, when you hear this, uh, 75 oh, uh, 7507 West Oklahoma Avenue, Buena Vista Banquets and Restaurant, the sixth annual Showcase of Champions. Come see me and, you, and, our, and I'm going to say our boy. And your boy, Chris Black. I can't talk today for some reason, but I'm, I'm probably because it's probably because uh, True Elements is going to cut me off in the middle of this like it normally does. But Showcase of Champions this Saturday. Be there, be square. Tickets at LegacyProWI.com and Facebook.com forward slash LegacyProWI. Didn't have to cut you off today, man. You've just been fucking porky pig in it, but you know. <laughs> but uh, that's all, folks. Anyway, you guys want to go ahead and give out your social medias and let the people know where they can find you? You can catch me at Xavier Mustafa on Facebook and Twitter. Also catch up my catch up catch up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> catch my solo podcast at XM Cinema. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram and wherever you f- get your podcast fix. Uh we are talking about the What If series right now as well as the challenge. So I uh, make sure you check those out. Be sure to check me out on Facebook and Instagram at the Natural Chris Black and at the underscore natural underscore CB on Twitter. Also be sure to check out my content on New Japan on my YouTube channel. I believe Russell Grand Slam is happening, I believe, this weekend. Not going to have time to put my predictions out for that unless it's a very short video, but definitely I'm going to have my review of the show put up sometime next week. And I recently discovered that if you go to Google and you type in hashtag come get slam, you can pretty much find everywhere that we are online. So that's really cool. But in case you want to search us out individually, you can go ahead and find me at Slamcaster T E78 over on Twitter. You can also find our two pages over on Facebook. One is the official Slamcasters page, which is Saturday Night Slamcasters. And then we also have our Slam board which is Saturday Night Slam Cast or Slam Board. That's more of a discussion board. You can also find us wherever you get your podcast from. Just go to your favorite podcasting app, type in Saturday Night Slam Casters, and you, we should pop right up. And if we don't, just do hashtag come get slammed. Also, since you're here on YouTube, be sure to give us a like, leave a comment, and hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you know whenever new episodes go up. We still are doing our SNSC Goes to the Movies, where we are reviewing classic films some of them um well most of them right now it's the wwe films exclusively but it is going to be expanding to other films that wrestlers have been in or that discuss or cover wrestling also we have our dark side of the ring coverage that we'll be picking up once again we know that the season is getting ready to kick back into full gear so be sure to check that out over here on youtube as well and we also have a discord server 
where you can join that and interact with us live. We do live shows over there. Also, we do some chats over there as well. So be sure to join the Saturday Night Slamcasters Discord. Other than that, holla at your boys. Come get slammed. Peace. We up out of here.